Hey there guys, so let's talk about this upcoming heavyweight fight between Alexander Povetkin and David Price. Now, when this fight was first being talked about, it was Eddie Hearn who put the information out there about this fight to start with. And uh, a lot of people were very dismissive of it, a lot of people were claiming that this fight shouldn't take place and that it's a mismatch and that um, David Price doesn't really belong at this level. And with that, with that in mind, I have to ask you guys, is it wrong? For me to be more excited about this fight than I am about the Joshua Parker fight. Because <laughs> for some reason I am. I'm more excited about this Povetkin Price fight than I am about the main event. And that's weird because the Joshua versus Parker fight is a unification between two undefeated world champions. But for some reason this, this Price Povetkin fight is a fight that appeals to me a little bit more because I just think that this is one of them fights that you know going into it that no matter what happens and no matter how long this fight lasts it's going to be competitive and it's going to be it's going to, well when I say competitive what I mean is there's going to be a lot of tension and it's going to be entertaining because these are two guys that can punch uh, David Price is extremely vulnerable, right? extremely vulnerable, okay, the guy's got a horrible chin, the guy's got terrible stamina, um, and, you know, he, he isn't the bravest of fighters, you know, he breaks down mentally, if you get on the inside and work his body, he has no idea how to defend himself inside, but at the same time, he has a couple of glaring advantages in this fight, first of all, the size difference, the size difference in this fight is going to be astronomical. David Price is huge, okay, he's a very, very big guy. Now, Alexander Povetkin fought Christian Hammer in his last fight, who was the last guy to beat David Price, Christian Hammer. And um, Christian Hammer was significantly bigger than Povetkin. Go and look at that fight, look at how much heavier and how much, you know, more chunky and how much broader and taller Christian Hammer looks in that ring compared to Povetkin. And Povetkin, being the better boxer, was obviously able to school and dominate and dominate Christian Hammer. But Christian Hammer was significantly smaller, significantly lighter, and significantly shorter, and significantly weaker than David Price. David Price was just... I mean, go and look at the, the David Price-Christian Hammer fight and look at the early rounds and how that fight was going. David Price was massive compared to Christian Hammer. So, when, when you see these two guys next to each other at the weigh-in, and when you see these guys at the fight, David Price is going to have a massive, massive size advantage here. The guy's like six foot nine. Uh, he also has that devastating straight right hand from distance. And if he's able to land that on Povetkin, who's a fighter who does get hit, you know, he has a puncher's chance here. He does. Now, that, that's how you know the fight's going to be interesting, and it's going to be entertaining, and it's going to be tense. Because Povetkin is way better than David Price in terms of technique, in terms of athleticism, stamina, uh, punching technique, defense, um, you know, chin, all that stuff. Povetkin's just the superior boxer here, okay, on every level. Uh, you know, much better amateur pedigree, uh, although David Price was an Olympic bronze medalist. Povetkin was an Olympic gold medalist and a, um, a world champion in the amateurs. He was also... He was also a kickboxing champion and is an amateur kickboxer too. So this is a guy that has a, an extensive background in, in combat sports, an extensive resume. And uh, he, he comes into this fight with, with a massive advantage in terms of experience and talent. But it's just that size of David Price, the, the, the huge difference. I mean, Povetkin's about six foot one. David Price is, what, six foot nine six you know maybe even more than six foot nine david price is taller than tyson fury look at the two guys next to each other david price is at least six foot nine um you know he's huge so you know <laughs> i mean you know guys like Irk and tepper don't tony thompson and christian hammer who are the guys that have beaten david price uh, and even some of the other guys that David Price has fought, like like Audley Harrison and Sam Sexton, these guys are at least six foot four. You know, tall guys, big, heavy guys. These guys are significantly bigger than Alexander Povetkin. So Povetkin is going to be one of the smallest opponents that David Price will have fought in his career. Povetkin's one of these past era heavyweights. You know, the the size of, ha of how heavyweights were in the Muhammad Ali era, for example. Whereas David Price is a product of just you know 
the, these new age heavyweights, these fucking giants. That's what David Price is. The guy's absolutely huge. So th that's going to make this fight interesting as long as it lasts. Is just the the size difference and and how much taller and longer that David Price is compared to Povetkin. But Povetkin should win the fight. He should win the fight by stoppage. He should break down David Price at some point. If he gets inside, like I said before, and works the body, uh, David Price is going to fall apart and he's not going to last five rounds if that happens. But, you know, if Price is able to keep the, the fight at long range and box from distance, he could maybe cut, you know, open a cut on Povetkin because Povetkin cuts quite easily. He's one of these guys that marks up and cuts. He's got very pale skin. And... Um, you know, I, I could see David Price giving him some issues from the outside, but I just think the longer the fight lasts, the more it favours Povetkin, because Povetkin has good stamina, and even at 38 years old, his stamina's quite good, and he has an impressive um, skill set, you know, he's good at getting on the inside and breaking his opponents down, um, decent power, it's nothing special, he doesn't hit nearly as hard as Price hits, but I'd say he's a, a bigger puncher than Christian Hammer, so... You know, he, he could probably stop David Price if, if he if he ups the tempo. I, I don't see him I don't see him knocking Price out cold. I, if he's gonna get the stoppage, I think it's gonna be a, a technical stoppage. I think he's gonna break him down and, and stop him on his feet or just wear him down and Price just runs out of gas and gets stopped. You know, I I can see him technically stopping him. But um David Price th this is David Price's last opportunity to be a, a major player at heavyweight because He's failed miserably, you know, he's he's disappointing, he's kind of like Gary Cornish in the sense that he turned professional, he's a big tall guy, he had decent power, um, but he just was never able to make it, he didn't have the heart, didn't have the chin, you know, similar to Audley Harrison, again, tall guy, lots of power, lots of talent, did not have the skill or the durability to pull it off, you know, and ended up, ended up becoming a disappointment in his career, so... You know, his career has been very disappointing. It's been a disappointment, and he he knows that. He understands that. So he's looking to, you know, kind of get get back to where he was before the Tony Thompson fight in 2012. You know, he wants to be, um, you know, taken seriously as a heavyweight contender again. So to be taken seriously as a heavyweight contender, he has to win a fight like this. So this is his opportunity. He's getting the fight in his backyard. Uh, it's going to be in the UK. Price is from Liverpool, but the fight's taking place in Cardiff. It's in the UK. Uh, Alexander Povetkin, to my knowledge, has never boxed in the UK before. Um, the places he's used to be to boxing are... Uh, he's boxed in Germany earlier in his career. He boxed a lot in Germany. He's boxed more recently in Russia, which is where he's from, of course. And he's also boxed in Finland before. And, and I don't think he's ever boxed in the UK before. So uh, this is a new experience for him. And you never know, at 38 years old, Perhaps he'll get old overnight. You never know. So David Price has an opportunity here. But um, if I was to make a pick, I've got to pick Povetkin, man. I've got to pick him to stop David Price, surely. If he, if he doesn't stop David Price, if it goes the distance, I don't know if Povetkin will get a decision. Because, I mean, this is on an Eddie Hearn card. Um, you know, David Price, whereas I'm not 100% sure if he's actually signed with Eddie Hearn. I know he was with Sauerland up until recently. Um, you know, Eddie Hearn will certainly have his back on the scorecards, let's be honest, because it'd be easier to sell a David Price-Anthony Joshua fight if if David Price is able to pull off the upset here, and um, obviously it'd be a big fight in the UK, and an easy fight for Joshua, you know, David Price doesn't have anything for Joshua, he would go down in a single round in that fight, whereas Povetkin will at least provide a, a you know, a difficult challenge for, for Joshua, so... Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, i got to go with Povetkin to win by stoppage because I can't see him getting a decision in the UK. So, um, yeah, i got to go for Povetkin by stoppage. I think he understands that. Um, let me know what you guys think about this. Um, just one, one, one more thing I'd like to talk about. The, uh, the Joshua Parker fight. Now, um, I am going to do a prediction video for that fight. I'm not sure when. Maybe later this week. But... Um, I'll tell you guys where I am with that fight right now. I'm I'm not that excited about it. I'm not, you know. I just think that, you know, J Joseph Parker to me, whereas he's a guy who has kind of overachieved a little bit. I mean, he won the world title. That's great that he was able to win a world title. Um, you know, he was able to defeat Andy Ruiz. I, I thought he beat Andy Ruiz. A lot of people didn't think he did, but I personally thought he won that fight. Um, but he didn't look great doing it. He hasn't looked great in a long time. The last time he actually impressed me in a fight was when he beat 
uh, Dimitrenko, and that was a while ago now. And uh, since then, he hasn't looked very good against that sparring partner. He thought he looked terrible. Um, against Huey Fury, he won the fight, clearly. He pretty much dominated it, in my opinion. A lot of Huey Fury's fanboys are just a bunch of pricks, man, that think he won that fight. I'd, if you think Huey Fury won that fight, you don't know what you're looking at. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to insult you guys, and you can thumb down the video if you want, but you think Huey Fury won that fight, you don't know what you're looking at, okay? He ran away like fuck that whole fight and really did nothing. So, um, but the point is that Joseph Parker has shown in his past few fights that he hasn't really been able to impress at a level where he should be impressing. I mean, particularly against uh, the likes of that sparring partner that he fought and, and Andy Ruiz, who are two, two heavyweights that I really don't rate. Um, you know, he really should have looked better than he did. And um, I think going into this Anthony Joshua fight, he has a lot of work to do, and I, I don't think that he can provide a, a serious challenge, to be honest. I, you know, I, I, I don't see him as any better or worse than I see Kubrat Pulev's chances against uh, against Joshua. And you guys know that I was picking Joshua to knock Kubrat Pulev out. So, yeah, I don't think it's much of a challenge. Um, I just think it's a formality to get that WBO belt for Joshua. Uh, I could be wrong, but anyway, whatever. This, this price Povetkin fight... I'm picking uh, Povetkin to win by stoppage. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.